So as I mentioned in my earlier commentary, uh, the whole predicament I was facing with the rating and why I changed the scale was immediately relevant to the games I wanted to look at this week, and indeed is why I wanted to look at these two games this week, specifically, because both of them had the exact same problem. Uh, this problem is most severely highlighted by my friend Gary, who played through Call of Duty Mount of Warfare 1 and 2 uh, three weeks ago, I believe it was, and he really enjoyed it, and he really got into it, you know, and I'll discuss his reactions later when I get into the good stuff about the games, but the fact of the matter is he beat it in a night. One night. Beat, beat both games in one night. <laughs> and for a modern game, that's kind of pathetic, to be completely honest with you. And that was the problem. How do you rate a game that's fantastic, and yet is so short? No, I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat here, okay? I am not a huge fan of multiplayer. As, as anybody who's been watching my reviews knows, I am not into PvP, I'm not into Versus, I'm not into competitive gameplay, I just never have been, you know. I enjoy cooperative, I enjoy racing the course, as I like to call it, you know, golf it being the ultimate example there, although I actually don't like golf that much, but you get the idea, you know. I, I like playing against the, the obstacle, I like playing against myself, and I like playing with my friends. I do not like playing against other people, especially complete strangers I've never met and never will. It's just never been my thing, right? Given that, you can obviously understand why I basically have never played the multiplayer aspect of Modern Warfare. I played Modern Warfare 1 extremely briefly, multiplayer, way back when it first came out, and I have not played Modern Warfare 2 at all, multiplayer. No, I just never felt the desire. I feel like I have to get that out of the way because, and I, I acknowledge this and I appreciate this, that is pretty much the draw of the games, all things considered. That is why they are some of the better selling games of all time. That is why they are still being played to this day. You know, that's why everyone is running and chomping at the bit in order to get Modern Warfare 3, because they really want to get into that multiplayer aspect. So I just wanted to get out of the way that, yes, I do acknowledge that. I, I get that a lot of people are really into that, and I get that it's really well done from what I understand, and the whole leveling and perk system is interesting and blah blah blah, and some people hate it, and some people love it, and nobody's in the middle. <laughs> I have no opinion, obviously, because I can't really give a good opinion on something I haven't done. But the point being, I just have to get all this out of the way, because all of that is over there. Okay, you know, I'll give you your props, I understand that that's part of the game, and I understand that that's part of people's reasoning, but it's not part of mine. It's so, completely ignoring all of that for the duration of this review. Now then, <laughs> I'm looking at Modern Warfare 1 and 2 uh, as one cohesive game, because the overall differences between the two of them, in all frankness, are simply not significant enough to really count them as separate games. Not saying that Modern Warfare 2 didn't add to the series and polish it and refine it and make it better. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, from a reviewer's perspective, reviewing the two of them as a cohesive unit makes perfect sense. In fact, I imagine that will be the same as th with 3, although it might not be. As several people are probably aware, the whole reason we've been waiting so long for 3, and yes, I include myself in that, is because of the whole legal issues with Infinity Ward and the stuff they did. And I'm, I'm going to try not to comment about that, because I don't know the whole details, but it just... The whole thing seemed really shady to me, and the fact that we might not have all of the original team still working on the game may mean that we don't get the same quality of gameplay, and I'm... Uh, we'll see. You know, I've already pre-ordered Modern Warfare 3, so that's not really an issue. But I'm a little more hesitant about this one than I should be. But that, we're not talking about Modern Warfare 3. 1 and 2. The, Mod the Call of Duty series has always been its own little niche market until Modern Warfare. It was off in the corner doing its own little World War II scenarios and whatnot, and engaging in battlefield fronts and that sort of thing, and it was kind of buggy, and it was kind of... well, not good, to be completely honest with you. It never really got popular acclaim until they decided to revamp the formula and hit the modern era. And there is, it is worth noting that they really do put a lot of thought and effort into this, these games. One of the things I've said many times about any game, about any media for that matter, is that if you really pull together and get all your people putting forward their best work and doing their best effort, what will result will be a good work by default. You know, I point to the Pirates of the Caribbean's movies, right? You look at the concept and you just start laughing. You want to make a movie, a full production movie, about a three-minute ride from Disneyland that nobody has enjoyed for 20 years? Really? But they had good actors, they had good writing, they had good music, they had good directing, they had good effects. 
excuse me, you know, they had good prop design, they had good set design. Every single aspect did a good job and put forth their full effort. And any time something does, the Assassin's Creed series for video games is another fantastic example. They really put forth the effort into making a good game, and this is what the Modern Warfare's did. Both of these are games that were very well constructed, and you could tell they really did their research on on the, the, the setting, on the the, un the units you'd be going through, the, the, the weapons, the vehicles, the way things work in general. All of that was really well done. Now, obviously, playing these as a, a, what do they call it, battlefield simulator, I believe, you know, the realistic shooter, is really kind of un, uh, not a good thing. I mean, yes, there is a degree of realism attached to the game, but calling Modern Warfare 1 or 2 a realistic shooter is not something I would do. It is a very fun shooter, and in fact, a fantastic shooter, I'd say. The, let, let's talk about the gameplay for a little bit, because the gameplay is... It's cover-based shooting, to an extent, but at the same time, you don't have to. You can use grenades and flashbangs uh, to a significant degree. You can you can approach the missions with just about any play style you really want. With, uh, with a few exceptions, your weapons will carry forward from previous missions. I guess I should take that back, actually, because that's really not true in the first game. There's only three exceptions to that in the first game. In the second game, that's more true. As, as you're carrying forward, you will carry forward the guns you actually want to keep. And you can then, you, you know, approach it with your particular play style if you prefer to be a knife or if you prefer something with, you know, a shotgun variety. I'm, I can't think of examples right now, so forgive me, because I've always been one of the people who prefers the big heavy machine gun, the Spats, I believe. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I'm not that good at the thing. But it's the one that has a magazine of about, I don't know, 100 or so bullets per per magazine, and it takes, God, like 20 seconds to reload. But if you use it properly, it's really effective. You get my point. There, There's a great deal of variety in how you can approach your missions, and they aren't really linear, especially in Modern Warfare 2, where they revamped the engine that uh, manages the AI of the overall setup, and instead of... See, in Modern Warfare 1, what they do is they just fling infinite enemies at you from just certain directions because they were trying to push you. They, they were trying to give you a sense of this is the direction you want to go in, and so if they wanted you to go this way, they'd have infinite amount of enemies spawning this way, pushing from behind, and they'd just keep coming and keep coming until you'd finally, you know, moved on and hit the next checker point. Now, that worked. It was a little annoying sometimes, though, but in Modern Warfare 2, they did it much better. The AI will still push you this way, but all of the AI across the whole map will congregate and start setting this up, and they'll block it, blockade this section, and then they'll, they'll toss the grains over here, pushing you over here, and then they'll start shooting from this direction, putting you here, so forth and so on. It's really well done, and for the most part, you don't even notice it if you're not actually looking for it, which is always a nice thing. And, and on top of that, because there are no infinite enemies, it is actually possible in several missions, if you feel patient enough, and if you feel like taking that tactic, which I have on several times, to just kill every enemy on the map. So you have a safe time of going through the area you're going through. You know, several of the... I can't think of the name of it. The gang areas in, in uh, South America where you have to go through and they're just all over the rooftops and whatnot. Just ki just sitting back and killing all those as they slowly approach me was something I have done in the past because I just didn't feel like dealing with it. You get the idea. The, the gameplay is certainly more than adequate. It's one of the more enjoyable FPSs I've played in a long time. The last time I remember having that much fun in an FPS was Half-Life. Which I guess segues nicely into my next point. One of the things I truly love about the Modern Warfare is, in fact, I would go so far as to say the thing I truly love about that is they do something that hasn't really been done since Half-Life. What Half-Life did, it, forgive me for a moment, some of you might not have been around during that era of the of the old FPSs where, do, where everything was Doom. You know, yes, sometimes they'd be in 3D. Yes, sometimes you'd be shooting aliens instead of... Well, I guess there were aliens as well, but, you know, whatever. Whatever you're shooting, whatever you're doing, the whole game was just Doom, right? Half-Life came along and said, no, 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 no. Here's how you do it. And Half-Life pulls off something that had never been done before. Storytelling from the first-person perspective. And that was interesting because it's a medium that had never been explored before, you know. I indeed, it's a medium that is almost never explored in general, even to this day, even though video games are custom-tailored to be played from first-person perspective for a storytelling story experience. The fact is, most games you play nowadays are third-person, in fact, I'd say like 99% of video games are third person, and occasionally you have second person. I can't actually think of an example off the top of my head. I had one earlier, but I can't remember it now. And then you have the occasional first persons, right? And you see that in all of the media, too. Books are third person almost all the time. Movies are obviously third person. You, know, you get the concept. 
So having a first-person storytelling experience was something that was new and exciting, and it was really well done. You really got to... It, it's more immersive, if I could put it in that way. You know, it's like... I'm trying to think how to put this, because they didn't quite pull this off with the Elder Scrolls. That's what they were going for, because the Elder Scrolls is the other series that tends to go for first person. But it was never designed to be first person, you know, because you can zoom the camera, you can do the third person thing, and you, the character, and in all the Elder Scrolls to date, not counting Skyrim, which is coming out next Friday, woo um, all the Elder Scrolls to date, you're still playing as part of a story, but it's not, you really have no personal interaction with that story outside of the the uh, the combat and whatnot, you know? As weird as that sounds, it's an interesting bl place to roleplay in, and that's what it's designed to be. It's designed to be less linear. But that's my point. The Call of Duties, to bring it all the way back now, forgive me for that segue, is, the f is a first-person storytelling. You are re reading what you are experiencing, a story from first perspective, for the eyes. You know, it, 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 it jumps right off the bat. What's the, one of the very first things you do? You hop into the, the, the mind, the, the body, of a deposed dictator of some never-named Middle Eastern country, and get to watch, the as they're driving through the town, two major story characters driving you, you don't even recognize them at first, and watching the horrible state of affairs in the area as they're talking on the, the speaker on, on the radio about exactly what's happening, and you, you get dragged in first person. I want to keep stressing this. You are being dragged. You know, your camera is doing this thing as you're being lulled up to your execution points, and then you get to watch someone shoot you in the face and execute you. <laughs> ah, and, and I guess that's really what I'm getting to, is the, the storytelling flavor of the Call of Duties, of Modern Warfare 1 and 2, is nothing short of fantastic. You, they really, uh, even ignoring the fact that there is good writing and there is good set pieces and, you know, they have a good story going, the way they present it, even if it was a mediocre story, would still be fascinating, would still be interesting, because they really take full advantage of that first-person perspective that almost nobody else does, right? And so... Con to continue with this theme here, one of the things that really gets me about that game, and I'm sure most people who you know have a, have any feelings about this game, is the I don't even know how to put it. The wham moments, the the impact of the story. Now, granted, part of it is the m music, and you know there's props to that because the music is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I can't even think of the name of the guy who does the songs, but he does a very good job of it. He's the guy who did the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Shoot, I can't think of his name all of a sudden. James Horner? Is that it? Ah, anyways, uh, enough. The overall presentation is is very moving. I'm going to put it in that way. It, I've, I've talked before about feeling and how I have difficulty feeling and how any game, any anything really, but m mostly, especially video games, that actually conjures a feeling within me automatically gets more of a rating than anything else. And the, both of the Modern Warfare's have done this in spades. I have actually played Modern Warfare in tears before, and I, I have no shame about admitting this. I have played through that game in tears because, you know, not, not just because of grief, Grief is nothing. Grief is a word that, that, that doesn't even come close to expressing the, the breadth of emotions that I was feeling. It was just grief and, and impact and, and camaraderie and, and the, the, the severity of the situation and how screwed up this whole thing really is. And, and just, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to properly express it. I really don't. It was so moving. I, I'm not even talking about the really big moments, the one everyone knows about. You know, the nuke. The nuke scene. Even knowing that was coming, and I did know it was coming the first time I played it, and it was still just, oh my god. I, I showed it to a friend of mine, my roommate, and he was just standing there like, he, he couldn't believe that they actually pull, did that, that they actually pulled that off. He, uh, you know what, I've got the perfect way of putting this. I've talked about my friend Gary several times, and Gary is much more of a gameplay person than a story person. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. But it's his preference, right? And he doesn't tend to get into games as much as I do. He, they haven't been a part of his upbringing, a part of his life, as much as they have of mine. Again, nothing wrong with that. But my point in saying that is to get across the point that he will play something and just be like, yeah, okay, that's interesting, and it, like he's reading a book. But the modern warfare's actually affected even him so much that he just came to me and he was like, wow. You know, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's the reality of it." Now that now, I, I've just been gushing about the story this whole time, and I, I don't want to give away too much about the plots, but I do want to get, I, I do want to mention one moment, and this is this is the moment I think personally is one of the most impacting ones. It's not the nuke scene; it's in Modern Warfare 2, and throughout all the game, throughout both of the games, uh, 
the beginning of a mission always starts with you having this uh, Google Maps type satellite thing and it shows you detail on where you are and sometimes it'll show you some of the schematics of the vehicles and weapons you'll be dealing with and someone's talk talking over it, talking about the mission and the relevance there too and blah blah blah, right? That's just the general presentation of the briefing that you're always given. One of the missions just starts off and you hear the emergency broadcast noise and I don't know if you've ever heard that noise in real life. I have once when I was very young, back in the Cold War era, when that when the the wall was still up. I heard that noise, and it was just startling to hear it all of a sudden again. I remembered it distinctly. And it just slowly scrolls across the screen. Everyone needs to evacuate this, this area of the state of Virginia, of this town, blah, blah, blah. You need to get away as soon as possible. Do not move individually. Move as groups. Cover everything. And there's one line in there that's so quiet and so understated that you almost don't realize what it means at first. It basically says, Danger can be coming from any quarter do not try to stop for for safety and it it really hits you because what that me the, the reason it's saying that is because the russians who are invading at that point in time are killing civilians on purpose <laughs> which as anybody who knows anything about warfare is pretty much the biggest no-no of any war that has ever been and especially of the modern era and and the very next thing that happens is you show up in a bunker and there's no mission briefing there's no this is this mission blah you're just in a bunker but zoom and you walk through and there's injured soldiers everywhere lots of marines a few uh hvacs i believe I, I'm, not, I'm not sure i'm not really good at my acronyms so forgive me yeah but there's a there's a f smattering there's a variety of people there is my point and you slowly come up again first person i want to stress this you you slowly come up around the ramp and you look up and the music just all of a sudden out of nowhere swells up and you see the washington monument in flames half apart and you pull yourself up and you realize you're in the very center of the of the the uh the Shoot, I can't think of the name of it all of a sudden. The the center part of Washington, D.C., the field, the school. I can't think of its name all of a sudden. I've been there. And, and the whole place is dug up. There are trenches that have been uh, hastily dug up. There are fortifications. There's barbed wire all over the place. You look over and you see the White House, which is on fire and half apart. And the music just swells. And oh my god. That was just... That, that's a moment. I'm sorry. I, I'm not much of a patriot, and I admit this. But that's not the point. That was never the point. In fact, one of the strongest messages of the modern warfare is that patriotism, for any side, is a bad thing. There are no good guys, except for the player characters in modern warfare. That, and that's another one of the... Even they aren't really good guys. They're just trying to do what they can to make things not worse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting a little rambly again, because I really could gush about this game and its incredible story, as, as short as it is for quite some time. And you'll understand, if you're seeing the emotions I'm projecting here, if you're seeing how much this impacted me, why I had such an issue rating this game originally, and why I had to completely change my system, because it was so hard rating a game that hit me this much, and made me feel this much, and is four hours long. You know? It's hard to do. But I'll move on now. That was the one of the moments I wanted to touch on. Another thing I wanted to touch on is the fact that Modern Warfare did something that WoW did before, and that Star Trek Next Generation did. It, let me back up a bit and explain. What, and in any form of media, be it books, uh, music, video games, television, or movies, there's a startling difference between its particular genre and its fans, like let's just say science fiction for the sake of this argument, and popular media, right? Popular media is the kind of thing where you could go to someone and you could say, Darth Vader. And they will know who you're talking about. They may have never seen the Star Wars movies, but they will know who Darth Vader is. You could say, Captain Picard. And they'll know who Captain Picard is. They've probably never seen Ta Next Generation, or maybe they have, I don't know. But that's my point. That's the popular media. Everybody knows that. By contrast, I'll keep, I'll keep the Star Trek example going here. By contrast, Deep Space Nine, most people don't know who Cisco is. Most people don't know who Dax or... or uh, Excuse me, or Kira, or any Odo, or any of those are. You know, they might know who Quark is, but you get the idea. This was a very good show, indeed. Most people think that Deep Space Nine was better than the Next Generation, but it never escaped the confines of its audience. If if you can understand what I mean, it never broke out into that popular media area like World of Warcraft did. There are some arguments, and I myself would say this: that Asheron's Call, for example, was a better game. But Asheron's Call is very popular amongst video game enthusiasts, gamers especially not amongst the world, amongst the people. Now, 
You can go into elitism in either direction of this as much as you want. The only reason I mention this is because it's usually something significant, something special, that causes a game, book, movie, music, whatever, in order to break through and enter that popular media. Modern Warfare has done this. Most people know what Modern Warfare 1 or 2 is. Most people have heard of the games and know about the controversies surrounding them, and at the very least have some kind of opinion about them. And that's worthy of note, considering, again... These games, and you know, aside from the multiplayer aspect, which is over here, are like four hours long. And they still pulled it off. It's like, I don't even know what to put it, uh, how to put it, I really don't. It's, it's just interesting to me. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just collecting my thoughts a little bit. I've had a long night. It's been really busy here with power outages and whatnot. In fact, if the lights flicker, forgive me, because we're still having power outages. Anyways, point being that Modern Warfare managed to pull itself into the public eye in more ways than one, and generally for the better. Yes, people are, of course, going to bitch about it. Yes, people, of course, are going to rant and say how horrible it is. And and that leads me into my second topic I wanted to talk about. The controversy in the second game, in Modern Warfare 2. Now, Russian evading America, that's... controversial, sort of, but not really. Because people... People assign importance, I'm, I include myself in this, people assign more importance to specific types of acts if they are described or presented in such a way, right? Uh, I hate to even say this word, but just, just to use an example right now, the word rape automatically contains horrible connotations with it, right? As, as well, it should. It's a terrible, horrible thing that should never happen. But my point being that using that word will evoke more of a response in someone than if you use another word, which means basically the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and point one out here for you. Assimilation. Yes, it's a fictional thing, but what is assimilation? What is it? You are taking someone and violating their mind, violating their body, and making them do things against their will. That sounds worse than rape to me, in, in all in total honesty. However... The two words carry completely different connotations. My reason for bringing this up is Russia invading America sounds like war. It's it's distant. It's it's you know hard hard to put a a number on it. It's like, well, forgive me for quoting Stalin. It's like the old saying of a mil death of a million is a statistic, but death of one man is a tragedy, because we as individuals can better perceive the death of one person than the death of a million people. It's hard to wrap your mind around that, right? I, I'm, I'm rambling just a little bit, I do apologize, but my point is, in Modern Warfare 2, for those of you who don't know, there is a mission where you, an individual, go through a completely normal, ordinary airport uh, in Russia. I, I don't remember which airport, I believe it says at some point. Uh, it wasn't modeled after a specific one, they went out of their way to make sure it wasn't, just to make sure that there wasn't that extra layer of doom there, because they were already... S <laughs> they've, they really had issues even getting this game published, and in fact they had to severely modify it for other countries, because their particular censorship policies wouldn't let them release it as is. Only America, that I'm aware of, actually got the completely uncensored version, but moving along. You're going through here as terrorists. Real terrorist, and I, I want to stress that because the word terrorism is another word that that tends to be to evoke reaction and and tends to be misused in a, in an attempt to evoke the reaction. But an actual terrorist, someone who is causing terror for no direct direct intent or purpose other than to cause ill, to to do do ill, to be evil, if I can use such a word, that is what you're doing. You're going through this airport, gunning down helpless innocent people who are are begging and crying and on the ground pleading for their lives and surrendering and. I'm sorry, I'm actually getting a little misted up here, because I actually can't do that. <laughs> I, I, I am too much of a me. I, I am too much... I don't know how to put it better. I, I cannot... Even knowing it is a video game, even knowing that this is just a game, I cannot bring myself to do that. You don't have to, by the way. It is worthy of noting. You do not have to join in. You just have to be there while it's happening. And, and that's what I have done. I, I've walked along with these people who are getting down innocent civilians in the middle of an airport... And it's a horrible thing, but I, I guess my point is, that is the point. I will defend that scene, I will defend that mission, because it was there for a reason. It was not there just for controversy, it wasn't there just to make the news people riled up. The point of the games, the whole point of the, of the two games, you know, aside from the obvious point of making money and selling the product, has been about how horrible warfare is, about how horrible patriotism is, about the terrible, horrible things people do to each other for the most horrible reasons, and why it's all wrong. All of it. Both sides are wrong. And 
that mission shoved that fact down your throat so hard and really showed you the, the hard core reality of what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and spoil this for you really quick. What it is is you're actually a CIA agent who has inf infiltrated a group of Russian terrorists, real terrorists, who are engaging in this mission for spoilerific reasons. I'm actually not going to get into that. But the point being, you are an American individual in a Russian city, pretending you're a Russian, gunning down other Russians because you have such a sense of patriotism for your people that you're pretending to have the sense of patriotism for their people, and the whole thing's a setup to begin with. It, you get the, the concept. The whole point of that mission was to be a gut punch. The mere fact that it evoked the sheer emotional response it did means it succeeded. That is exactly what it was there for. I'm sorry, but that is exactly what that mission was for. And I, and I will defend their right to have that in there. I... I cannot bring myself to shoot down people with them. I, I can't. I, I can't do that. Any more than I could do that in real life. I would rather take the bullet myself, you know? But that's the point. It is, is the hard reality of the situation is something you should feel. Especially in a game that's trying that hard to bring it home for people. There's a reason that they actually have scenes of you defending Virginia Coast from from invaders is because they want you to actually feel like it is your home that's in being invaded, you know. Anyways, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off pretty soon here. <sighs> but my overall point is that the story of the modern warfare is both one and two, as short as they are, is astonishing. It is emotional. It is impacting. It really. Oh my God! It's well constructed. It's well presented. It's well experienced. Uh, from the very beginning, the very first mission, actual mission for Modern Warfare 1, is you're invading, invading, you're infiltrating a cargo ship. You can do it with or without killing people up to a certain point. But when it gets to a certain point where the ship gets attacked, and it starts sinking, and you have to escape from a sinking ship, and you have probably about 40 seconds total from the point at which the ship starts tilting over to getting to the helicopter. And, and that's real time. If you actually screw up along the way, if you go the wrong direction, if you don't know what you're doing, if you aren't listening, because the guy is sh shouting ahead of you, turn left, here, now turn right. If you aren't listening or paying attention or take a wrong turn, you are dead. And you will die. And the music is just screaming at you, and, and it's hard to even... They even made it difficult to control your character. I mean, yes, obviously forward is still forward, and, and left and right are still left and right, but they don't function quite right because the ship is at about this angle at that point, and so you actually, actually have to compensate for that. I don't know how better to explain these games. I strongly recommend for anybody who wants them. I, I know they're only like four hours each, and I understand that, but they are incredible campaigns. They are incredibly interesting. They are incredibly beautifully done. I really hope Modern Warfare 3 continues this tradition next next Tuesday, and I'm really looking forward to it. And both the Modern Warfare 1 and 2, I'm, I'm rating them as one game easily, and without even the tiniest bit of question. You know, get a uh, get a solid 8 out of 10. I, I I'll, The only reason they're that low is because of the shortness of the game and the, and the other factors involved. And I highly recommend both of them to anybody.